In this video, I'm going to show you how to find the velocity of an object which has been dropped. <clears throat> this is a common exercise in high school physics and also in uh, college physics. Let's take a look at what we have. Say we have a little setup like this, okay? And say a person is standing over here. And the person has some object, and this object is dropped. You have to be very careful here, and to, not to say that it's thrown. It is dropped. Okay. And then the object travels straight down until it strikes the ground down below, as follows. So one approach is to do the following. Assume conservation of energy, and then whatever potential energy is stored in the system relative to this level that I'm tracing will be converted into kinetic energy once the object is striking the ground at this instant. So the height is h for now. What we have is the following. By conservation of energy, we can write mgh. So the energy stored within the system at the top becomes the kinetic energy of the object when it strikes the surface, which is 1 half mv squared. This is a statement of the conservation of energies. And once again, take a look at this. The m's cancel from both sides, which means it does not matter whether you are dropping a marble, a person, or an elephant. The velocity is the same in all cases. So let's take a look. Let's solve this for v. And the way to do it is as follows. Let's rewrite this without the m's as gh equals 1 half v squared. Now we will multiply both sides by 2 over 1 so as to get rid of the 1 over 2 on the right side. So that will give 2 times g times h equaling 1 half times v squared times 2 over 1. So cancel the 2's. And all that remains is 2gh equals v squared. Once we have this, the next step is to take square roots because the square root operation is the inverse or the opposite of the squaring operation. So we take the square root of both sides as follows. And so we find that v equals the root of 2gh. So this is a general expression and the rest of it is used as follows. You are given the h and then you just plug into this. Okay, so for example, to make it more concrete, if you're given an h of 10 meters, okay, or a height of 10 meters, then the velocity, once the object has been dropped, at this point right there, when it's striking the surface, that velocity is equal to v equals the root of 2 times g times 10. So this will give 20g. And g in this context is taken as 9.81 meters per second squared. As is commonly pronounced, it also means meters per second per second. Okay, because this is an acceleration, so it tells you how many meters per second your velocity gains every one second. But it simplifies mathematically into meters per second squared. So now we can replace g with 9.81. And then we work this out on a calculator. So let me do that right now.
So that is about 14 okay? meters per second. There you go. <clears throat> so to review, you are using the principle of conservation of energy. You're dropping an object from a height h. It strikes the ground h meters below. Conservation of energy states. Whatever energy is stored within the system at the top becomes the kinetic energy of the, of the object at the bottom. Cancer out the m's, so it doesn't matter whether it's a person or an elephant being dropped. The rest of it is mathematics. We multiply by 2 over 1 on both sides. Take square roots. G is replaced with 9.81 meters per second squared. So to make it more concrete, h could be 10 meters, and the velocity is the root of 2 times g times 10, which is the root of 20g. Then we replace g with 9.81, and the calculator tells us that this is equal roughly to 14 meters per second. Thank you for watching.